this is Jane from SafeNet AT. In this video, I'm going to be integrating vSphere 6.7 and SafeNet AT's VMware Certified Key Secure for Government Key Management Server. This video is meant to provide a very quick overview of the integration, but if you are a SafeNet AT customer and you need help with the integration, please feel free to contact us and we can provide you with a very detailed integration guide. To keep this video as brief as possible, I've done some pre-configuration on KeySecure and we'll just review that with you. First, I have a, a two KeySecure cluster. I have a primary and then a secondary, and they are clustered together and are fully replicating data. What I've done from a pre-configuration standpoint is I have created a local self-signed certificate authority that is going to act as our root of trust. It's called Integration CA. I added it to the default trusted CA list that will be assigned to the key server so the key server knows what certificate authority should be trusted. I then created on both the primary and the secondary a TLS server cert called KMIP server cert. I created a certificate request and had it signed by the local CA. The one thing that I'm going to show you how to do is create the key server and this is going to be a KMIP key server as vSphere is a KMIP compliant endpoint. So I'm going to click Add and for protocol select KMIP. I'm going to set the network interface that the key server should listen on. The port is going to be 5696 which is the standard default. It can be anything you want but I'll use the default. Click Use SSL and in reality we are using TLS 1.2 by default and for the server certificate I'm selecting the TLS server certificate I created and click the Save button. Now I'm going to click the Properties button and in the Authentication Settings section I'm going to click Edit. For authentication we're going to be doing Client Certificate Authentication and this option which says Use for SSL Session and Username we are going to be both validating the signature on the client certificate we receive and then we're also going to be going into the certificate and extract, extracting from a field a username and we're going to ensure that a local user by that name exists on KeySecure and that username will be the key owner of any key that it happens to create or import or request KeySecure to generate. So it is a, it's the most secure setting and it is what we recommend for vSphere. Now the field in the certificate that will be authenticated is chosen here. And these are the various options and which option you choose will depend on how you perform the integration. You have two choices with vSphere. You can use a native CSR generation tool, which is very quick and very convenient for generating a private key and a certificate signing request, but it is somewhat limited in field choices and customization of the fields. It's still the easiest thing to do and a very secure way of doing it, so that is what we will feature in this integration. The other mechanism is that you could use an external utility like OpenSSL, which would give you more flexibility on what fields you could use for authentication and complete customization of those fields, but it is not as secure from a standpoint of generating a private key externally and then having to transport it in to vCenter. So we are going to focus on the CSR generation utility and if you use that utility the only field you'll want to use is organizational unit for authentication. So that's what I'm going to select here. And the other item that needs selected is the trusted CA list profile and for this we're selecting default. That is the one that is the profile that I added the integration CA to so the key server will trust any certificate that is signed and is validated to be signed by the integration CA that I had created. So with that, I'm going to click Save, and the key server is now fully created. The other thing that needs to be created on KeySecure is the local user that I just mentioned. I'm going to click on the Security tab and go to Local Authentication. 
and under local users click add and here I'm going to give it a username and in this case I'm going to use vcenter06 and then I do have to enter a password but I won't need to use it and click save now again this is going to be what the certificate um, would have in its organizational unit field okay so I will need to make sure the CSR contains that username in that field okay so with that key secure is configured and we're now ready to move to vSphere on vSphere I'm going to be using the HTML5 client if you should have any problems you can try falling back to the old flash client to see if that works better for you the configuration I'm going to be doing is on vCenter so I'm going to be navigating to our sole vCenter server and go to the configure tab and the first thing that needs to be done is I need to edit the advanced settings to change the default values that are going to appear in the certificate signing request so on the settings page click edit settings and then come here and select this filter and type in certs and then close it and here you can see all the default values for the certificate for the certificate signing request and this organizational unit name is the one we want to change now you'll notice there is no common name option here so I just want to point that out right now and I'll explain why that's significant later but I'm going to change this organizational unit to vCenter 06 to match the local user on key secure and I could change these other fields if I wanted to but to save time I'm just going to leave them at the defaults and click Save and with the settings changed I am now ready to configure the key manager server key management servers and that is done on this option right here so the first thing I'm going to do is click add and I'm going to name this SafeNet AT cluster and leave it as the default and give it a name call it the primary and enter the IP address of the key server and if you only have one network, network interface card it's just going to be the IP address of key secure and enter the port number of the key server and these can be empty those fields can be empty click add now what it did is it reached out to key secure to attempt to establish a session a TLS session the session failed because key secure is requiring a client certificate and the one that is currently loaded into vCenter is not signed by a valid certificate authority as far as key secure is concerned so we need still need to go through that process but for now it is asking us to trust the server certificate sent down by key secure so click trust and this is what we would expect to see we are still not successfully connected because of the lack of a client certificate but we at least now have a KMS certificate and its validity period showing so as a next step we're going to finish the trust process and that involves creating a client certificate so I'm going to come here and click make KMS trust vCenter now you have two different options on how you can do this integration we're, we're going to use this option but I just want to show you this because it can be a little confusing if you are using OpenSSL to generate a certificate request and a private key this is what you will use to get the signed certificate and private key into vCenter now it says KMS certificate and private key but it is actually the vCenter certificate and private key so if I were to select that option you can see here is where you will paste in the PEM encoded uh, certificate and private key and then click establish trust now that's not what we're going to be doing in this integration because I'm going to use the very convenient and secure uh, native CSR generation tool here so I'm going to click this option and click next 
And what it's done is using those settings that we saw in the advanced settings, it has created a certificate request. So I'm going to click Copy and then Done. Come up to Key Secure, click the Security tab, Local CAs, and click Sign Request for that certificate authority. Set the purpose as Client. Change the certificate duration per your security policy. Paste in the request and click Sign Request. Now I want to point out something here. Notice this common name and the organizational unit as vCenter 06 as we wanted it to be. Common name is very commonly used for authenticating in the certificate, but it looks like a, a just a string, a random number, but if you look at it closely, this is the year, this is the month, this is the day, and this is presumed time in some numeric fashion. This will change every time you generate a CSR on vCenter. And that works fine the first time you could create a local user with that common name, but when you go to renew a certificate, that common name is going to be different. And that is going to cause problems because KeySecure is authenticating the old common name, but more significantly, every key that vCenter created on KeySecure is going to be owned by that old common name and the new common name when vCenter comes into Key Secure, will not be able to access those keys. That's part of the security. So for that reason, the common name field cannot be used. You will want to use the organizational unit field. Okay, so having explained that, I'm now going to copy the signed certificate and come back to vSphere and click this Upload Signed Certificate option. Paste it in here and click Upload. And at this point, you see we are connected. Um, trust has been established in both directions. And if I come here to Key Secure, click Device, Log Viewer, Activity Log, this is what it should look like. Uh, this is the sequence of events that took place to establish the trust. We had SSL handshake errors, unable to get local issuer certificate. That was Key Secure complaining, I don't know who signed this certificate. And it was actually a VMware signed certificate, so Key Secure rejected it because it was not trusted. And then once TLS successfully established, you can see the KMIP messages coming up. This is Discover Versions, and this is what you will see when after the TLS is established and KMIP communication is established as well. So I just want to show you now how to add a second one, a second key manager. It's very simple. Click Add, enter the name, the IP address, the port, and click Add. You'll trust that certificate as well. And you'll see the connection come right up. Nothing else had to be configured because the client certificate is already loaded in vCenter. So the secondary, if I go and check the log viewer here, you can see the same discover version messages. So at this point the integration is done and vCenter is free to request keys be created on Key Secure or request keys from Key Secure as needed. And I just want to show you one more thing that may come in handy at some point. I'm um, just going to back, go back to the summary page. Um, there are no health checks in vCenter to make sure Key Secure is always there and always available. So one of the things that you want to do before you, say, reboot or um, maybe even create an encrypted VM or a vSAN, you're going to want to make sure that the key secures are there and available. So come back to the configure page and go on to the key management servers page and click the refresh button. And this will cause vCenter to reach out and confirm that connection is there. So you probably want to make this part of a manual procedure to just check on it and make sure everything is, is okay and connectivity is there. And that is especially important before you reboot. If you can't get your keys from Key Secure, your VMs are not going to come up. vSAN, 
virtual TPM, whatever else is using Keys on Key Secure will not work. So always verify before a reboot especially that you have connectivity. So I hope this video has helped. If you have any trouble or have any questions, feel free to reach out to SafeNet AT Customer Support. And we also have that integration guide available if you should need that. Thanks for watching.